Hello viewers, I am so excited today to share with you today's poem, The Brook, by Alfred Lord Tennyson. You must have heard of this poem earlier and since you might be facing difficulties while studying this poem and writing answers, here I am to give you some very easy explanation and understanding of the poem. So what are we waiting for? Without much ado, let's start with the poem. Firstly, I would like to talk the, about the poem, The Brook. You understand that it is about the brook. You can tell it is an autobiography of the brook. And uh, in other words, if you can uh, tell it in the poetic lines, you can say that the entire poem, The Brook is speaking on its own. In other words, the brook has been personified in the poem. I come from the horns of Coot and Hearn. I make a sudden sally. So the brook is the speaker, as you have already, as I've already mentioned, and it has been personified. Coot refers to a kind of duck, and Hearn refers to commonly known as herons. So the brook begins its journey from the place of Coots and herons. I make a sudden sally. So there is a sudden change in direction and the brook suddenly rushes down and sparkle out among the fern to bigger down a valley. So what does the poem, a poet tell or the brook tells? That ferns are flowerless plants and as the brook flows down, it sparkles because the sun's rays reflect. Because the sun's rays reflect and it flows through a ground that is mostly covered by ferns to bigger down a valley. So the movement down the valley is uh, something that is very noisy. That is why the poet has used the word here bigger. Okay and uh, once I finish the poem explaining I will uh, point out one by one the different uh, poetic devices that have been used in this poem so that you do not face difficulty in identifying it. So first let's read the poem and I understand it at once. By 30 hills I hurry down. So here the brook swiftly travels down many hills and 30 hills you must keep in mind it literally does not mean 30 hills but it refers to the numerous hills that it travels through or slip between the ridges. The brook quickly moves between the long narrow hill tops. So uh, the movement or the path of the brook is not very easy. It is facing a lot of difficulties and the reason I am telling you this point you will understand it as I explain you later that the path is not very simple. The path is not very smooth and comfortable or slip between the ridges. So by 20 thorps a little town and half a hundred bridges. So thorps is the archaic or the ancient term for the villages. So uh, what is the brook telling us that in the movement or the flow that is described as passing that the brook that is the brook is passing through little towns and the villages. The number of the villages, towns, bridges or hills point to the fact that it is a long way before it reaches its goal, before it meets its destination. Till last by Philip's farm I flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but I go on forever. So what is the brook now telling? It flows by a farm that is owned by a person of the name Philip. Brimming refers to filled to the edges and nearly overflowing. And here, very important usage of refrain by the poet Tennyson. Human beings are mortal. They are temporal beings on earth. However, the brook is immortal and its movement is eternal. So these final lines can also be interpreted as the immortality or the immortal nature, immortality of nature, something that we cannot do. We are also part of the nature, but we are temporal. We are mortal. After some time, we will die. We will pass away. But nature will keep on flowing and it is very important that we appreciate and take care of nature. So here the immortality of nature on a broader perspective can also be taken into consideration. Alright, now let's move on to the next part of the poem. So here we go to the next part. I chatter over stony ways in little sharps and trebles. I bubble into eddying bays. I babble on the pebbles. So here I am reading these four lines together is that 
there has been a very clear uh, like the previous part that we read a clear usage of onomatopoeia the sound images so chatter bubble and babble these are sound images or onomatopoeia so in the first line of the next part that we are studying i chatter over stony ways it makes a noisy yet interesting movement as it flows over the stony creek bed so the path is rough it is filled with stones it is filled with pebbles and sharps and trebles refer to the stony uneven way the path that the brook is traveling through i bubble into eddying bays i babble on the pebbles so the backward movement of the brook makes it to push for air so once you try to create some space in water what happens it ultimately results in some bubbles and that is what is happening to the brook it is not flowing continuously in a smooth way sometimes it is being blocked sometimes uh, some passages or push for air is needed or is being created by its natural course as a result the bubbles are being created it moves along the pebbles and creating creates a continuous murmuring sound so the murmuring sound of the brook is not that it is talking the movement is resulted in that murmuring sound with many a curve my banks i fret by many a field and fallow and many a fairy foreland set with willow weed and mallow so what do we see here the brook flows curvily because of the wearing and the curvy path the movement of the path is something that is not absolutely straight it is twisted it is turning it is curvy now the brook is telling that as it flows by many fields and barren lands it probably the renders uh, the readers to realize the infertility of the soil so it it does not distinguish between the cultivated land fertile land or some barren land it flows irrespective of the fertility or the barrenness of the land and many a fairy foreland set so suddenly there has been a piece of land that has been jutting out into the brook who no one knows who has be, who has created it and why is it called fairy because the presence of the colorful creatures be it the birds insects butterflies uh, gives the readers a feeling that as if it is haunted uh, it is uh, visited by fairies and that part is the part that is jutting out that is uh, favorably uh, visited by these creatures making it as if Uh, the land of the fairies with willow weed and mallow so this is a, another uh, reference to alliteration with willow weed and mallow so as uh, the path you can actually visualize the landscape the nature the willow weeds the mallow all these things you can visualize they are a part of nature and once you read this poem aloud you will feel at once with the uh, at one with the nature that and the path as if you are also traveling along with the brook i chatter chatter as i flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so the noisy movement of the brook is again highlighted and chatter chatter as you have come earlier also it hints at where have we come in bubble and babble so here also we come across in chatter so this is uh, this is again hinting at the onomatopoeia it shows that the rough path of the brook through which it flows now i am continuously referring to the rough path because it is very significant it is important that you note it down to join the brimming river that is the final destination for men may come and men may go but i go on forever again these lines refrain hints at the immortality of the brook whatever happens the journey of the brook is not going to stop i wind about in and out with here a blossom sailing and here and there a lusty trout and here and there a grayling so as the brook meanders in and out there a flower floats on top of the brook sometimes maybe it has dropped from the tree sometimes it has someone else has dropped it uh, or along the path it has collected it because it is traveling you will see in the later part also some forget me flowers are also growing maybe it is uh, those flowers or it may be some other flowers some uh, name that is uh, the brook is not aware of all everything it carries everything along its way be it the flowers the pebbles the ferns uh, whatever it is the fish as you see the hungry ever hungry trout Uh, which is traveling along with the movement of the brook because once there is movement there is life the stagnant water cannot breed 
the stagnant water cannot breed life it does not promise any life so without any life there will not be any water cycle there will not be any food so the trouts and the grayling are also equally uh, taken care of by the brook and as it moves these uh, fishes or these fish also travel along its way now let's study the next part and here and there a foamy flake so along with the graylings along with the trouts the lusty trouts now what is the brook telling or the poet telling the poet is telling that there are also lakes found in the course of the brook's journey which are filled with flow or filled with foam so the flakes uh, that are growing on the lakes the water bodies uh, because of the frothing movement of the brook because sometimes the bubbles they together uh, come together and uh, with a lot of pressure and air generated it forms a froth it forms it gives rise to froth and that is what it is talking about the foamy flake upon me as i travel so it forms on top because it is light naturally the water is uh, something that will come down and the um, uh, froth that is filled with air it will float on top as i travel means along the way with many a silvery water break so the water breaks because of the continuous movement of the brook and the water it is it has become silver in color and the golden gravel why the golden gravel because the pebbles on the bed of the brook reflect the rays of the sun that is why pebble no, sorry golden so here it is very important for you to note the different shades of colors that are coming out and draw them all along and flow so earlier in the first part we studied how the brook is reflecting the rays of the sun here also we are again seeing that the pebbles are also reflecting the rays of the sun giving it uh, the golden shine may means something gold silver these are all valuable metals unlike uh, so much as um, your iron or copper for that matter they are also valuable but precious by precious metals we generally associate with silver and gold and that is why uh, we can tell that the pebbles uh, are golden it is valuable it is precious why is it precious because due to the movement of the brook had the brook not reflected the rays of the sun the pebbles by itself would have not been able to reflect isn't it because it is opaque and draw them all along and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so the brook carries everything as it flows be it the flowers the pebbles uh, the ferns whatever it is it uh, the fish whatever it is it follows or it carries them all along its path without any distinction without any uh, differentiation and again the hint at the refrain that the movement of the brook is perennial the life is perennial and uh, no one can stop it men may come and men may go today the man is one man is here tomorrow it may he or she may not be here here men refers to human beings without any gender distinction so be very careful no tennyson did not have any idea of creating any gender distinction here so men here refers to human being so whoever is traveling uh, on the earth whoever is there on earth whoever is uh, uh, on the path of the means trying to sit uh, and observe the movement of the brook or have come along to visit the brook whatever today they may visit tomorrow they may not visit today they are existing tomorrow they may not exist because their uh, death has uh, taken them away so whatever it is they are uh, temporal they are not immortal i steal by lawns and grassy plots i don't know whether you have come across uh, or read the poem um, not exactly a poem it was part of uh, one of shakespeare's play uh, where tuxtone is talking about the seven stages of man uh, where life has been divided into seven stages because we are here the human beings we are here to play out our parts that has been assigned to them and once the curtain drops that means it is the end so that is what it means here we are we are just here to act we are not something that we are not the creators though we may feel sometimes to be like the sole creators uh, if you keep in um, view or you take in view the uh, current world scenario when we think that we are the creators and we live like we are immortals but that is not the case we are here to act out our parts and it is for our best that we should act our parts well and somehow it is echoed in these lines also 
it also hints at these lines that what is happening that uh, men have come today men may go go tomorrow because their act on this planet is over so that is why their act is closed the curtains have fallen and it is for them to take their leave i steal by lawns and grassy plots i slide by hazel covers to move the sweet forget me nots that grow over grow for happy lovers i slip i slide i glue my glance among my skimming swallows I make the netted sunbeam dance against my sandy shallows. So the movement of the brook now changes to a quiet movement. Maybe the brook is tired. We wonder whether the brook is tired or whether the path has become so rugged, the terrain is so rough that it has to move quietly, stealthily, without causing any disturbance to any part of the lawn or the grassy plots or the hazel covers that it is gliding through. and in the course the brook travels by the forget me nots as if these flowers the forget me nots are growing for the happy lovers who love each other very much so that is one more thing that you should keep in mind now in the next part that we see so the slipping sliding gliding uh, glooming glancing means everywhere all types of contemplating thinking movement that we notice of the brook and the, as the brook herself or itself or himself is describing it to be let's not assign any gender to the brook keep it itself so the jubilant movement of the brook is very noticeable in the first line i slip i slide i glue my glance this is uh, very clearly hinted here so what is the brook telling that within the reaches of the brook uh, which separates the solid objects from the liquids there is a clear distinction now what are the solid objects the solid objects are the swallows the swallows are the kinds of birds why are they skimming because you will see um, i don't know whether you have noticed it even you can search it in your google also now that you are not allowed to go outside uh, so much as uh, because uh, keeping in view the current scenario of the pandemic due to the pandemic so if you search also you will see that there are numerous birds who touch the surface of the water to probably catch a fish to probably take a dip so they just touch the surface and flow uh, and fly away and that is because uh, that is their way and this touching the surface and just flow fl flying away refers to the skimming the movement makes the sun's rays dance that is what we notice in the final two lines of this part that the movement of the sun's rays as it falls on the water the movement of the water creates a netted effect because it is not a uh, the water is not something that is moving on a very transparent smooth surface the path is rough the terrain is rugged so obviously there will will be some disturbances as the water is flowing and that is why the sun's rays when it falls on the surface of the water it makes the rays dance when it is it has covered the shallow uh, it has covered the pebble filled rock filled path it is time for it to move to the shallow places which is sandy so there are times when we see that the sea, uh, the bed of the brook the bed of the brook is not only rocky it is not only filled with gravels or gravels or pebbles but it is also at the same time sandy so the different paths the different uh, terrain we get a glimpse of the reader, readers are given a glimpse of now let's move on to the final part i murmur under moon and stars in brambly wilderness i linger by my shingly bars i loiter round my cresses so here what is the brook telling that the brook from morning till night flows here and it describes its journey under moonlit and starlit skies murmuring all the way to meet the river so uh, throughout the poem we have been seen how it is traveling so from morning till night now it is probably uh, coming to the close because it is nearing the river the journey is entirely explained be, uh, be it from the sunlit sunlit skies to the dancing of the sun rays to the moonlit and the starlit skies the brambly wilderness refers to the thorny prickly shrub shrub filled path of the brook because they are growing wildly they are not taken care of that is why the poet has called it to be growing in wilderness or the brambly wilderness 
I lingered by my shingly bars. So here the brook is telling that it spends a long time over the pebbly confines because there may be too much accumulation of pebbles or along the way. And what happens? It creates a kind of confinement, not allowing the water to flow freely as it was flowing all along. Unfortunately, that becomes a confinement for the uh, brook. We can also take this to be some kind of resting time before it reaches its goal. Now that it knows that it now that it knows that it is close to the river, it is uh, probably relaxed that it can rest for a while before again uh, finishing the final lap of its journey. So there can be two meanings. I loiter round my cresses, so it moves idly along and around the plants growing within the brook. So the water, the movement of the brook has uh, resulted in growing of numerous plants within the water body. Since there is movement, that is the reason the life has been supported, be it the fishes, the different types of fishes, the plants that are growing and uh, so it is taking a while probably to admire to uh, probably uh, spend some time idly with the plants that are growing because as it moves it might not have time to spend uh, the ones that are growing within it so we can clearly tell that you just imagine the brook to be a person and um, the plants the um, cresses that are growing within the brook to be your family members throughout your busy schedule you do not have time much time to spend with them uh, when you get to meet them when you are back home won't you love to spend some time won't you love to uh, talk to them idly or just to spend time with them just like that for the sake of happiness or, or it is, will it be just out of duty or something no it is fun filled it is something that you enjoy something that you crave after your busy schedule isn't it so uh, you can take it to this way and that is what the brook is also doing and out again i curve and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go but i go on forever so after stopping for a while resting fighting the obstacles once again it moves to join the river for men may come and men may go and over and over it reminds us the